In Iraq, government security forces conducted airstrikes on the homes in Ramadi and Fallujah of five leaders of the tribal revolutionaries, an armed anti-government movement. Iraqi security forces have been battling anti-government and al-Qaeda-linked forces in the cities for nearly three months. In Afghanistan, the U.S., British and Japanese governments pledged $286 million to rebuild important highways, dams and other important infrastructure over the next several years. The grant will be administered by the Asian Development Bank, which announced in Kabul that the first projects will be finished by the end of 2017. In Belarus, polling stations open for early voting in elections for local councils or Soviets. Students at the Belarusian State University of Culture and Arts who cast their ballots were granted a day off from classes and other benefits. Human rights activists and election observers say that authorities in Belarus falsify elections by conducting early voting. In Georgia, residents of Asatiani Street in the capital, Tbilisi, protested against the cutting down of trees in a park to make way for a high-rise development. The protesters who block construction vehicles say the project would hurt the city's environment and should be canceled. In Kyrgyzstan, a regional library in the southern city of Osh and Bishkek's American University in Central Asia have launched a campaign to support rural libraries. The local university has donated more than 4,000 books to local libraries. In Baghdad, the College of Fine Arts held its annual outdoor exhibition of artwork done by students at the school. Officials from the Education Ministry came to the opening of the exhibition, which included photographs, drawings, paintings and films. In Baghdad, publicly displayed artworks and monuments have been damaged in the past year by hardliners who say they contradict Islamic values. In Minsk, students at the Belarusian State University of Informatics and Radio Electronics have organized an exhibition of old computers and other electronic devices from the 1980s and 1990s. There are more than 100 examples of retro equipment in the exhibition, including some old video games. Many of the exhibits are from the private collection of one student. And that's the video roundup from Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty.